www.funsupermart.com Hi and welcome to Fun Supermarts webcast. Today we have Gao Weeping, Chief Investment Officer, Fixed Income of M Investment Services Berhad, and we're going to talk about Malaysian fixed income. Weeping, can you give us your outlook for Malaysian fixed income? I would say the second half outlook for Malaysian bond market will be actually more upbeat than the first half because um, external environment have further deteriorate, uh, followed uh, by first the China rate cuts and pumping liquidity into the system, and of course uh, followed by the Korea, recent Korea rate cuts. And the rate cuts expectation have actually slowly also filtered into Malaysian market. I think. Um, we expect second quarter GDP release from the world should be actually weaker and, uh, um, and most um, investors are actually very worried that um, third quarter will be, will be even slower and slowdown on China will have some impact to the world and of course the, uh, no near-term resolution on the EU will continue to drag the world into a very sluggish uh, growth environment. How much upside do you see and what are the key drivers? Okay, I would say the key driver in the market is of course the expectation of rate cuts, especially after um, Korea cut their interest rate. Um, and also um, the uh, huge foreign flow that flowing into the system. Early part of the year, we've seen the foreign holding in ringgit market is about uh, 30 to 35 percent, and the past one two weeks has actually surged to close to 40 percent, and we still see strong demand coming in. I would think the world is actually seeking for yield and they are looking for countries that have actually reasonable, healthy growth and Malaysia actually fit the criteria when you know, um, we, we should be able to deliver a 4% GDP target and um, our yield curve is fairly healthy that we have um, you know, 20 years MGS still around 3.84% and past one week we've seen the yield curve actually collapse by 20 basis point and we expect it will continue to actually tighten going forward and um, that will actually give a quite an uh, upbeat outlook uh, for second half uh, for this year for the return. What about the downside risks? Okay, the downside risk, of course, um, I would say um, two downside risks. One is internal and one external. Internal, of course, is actually the outcome of the elections. Perhaps it, it may actually um, trigger or give some noises uh, to, to the system. But if you bear in mind, um, bonds is behave a bit different as compared to, to equity in the sense that if the, the outcome of the, of the election is unfavorable, people may have to um, move or change their asset location into safe haven. And uh, Malaysian government bonds is a safe haven for ringgit investor. So you will still see flight to safety actually happen. So it's not that negative. But however, for um, for corporate issuance, you may have some impact, especially if certain issuance is a government link. So really, um, hand pick of high grade issuance is actually very crucial, important as this juncture. And if you talk about external, external of course is the noises in uh, in EU and also. Um, follow if you look at it, the CDS in the European banks uh, uh, is still trading all time high. Um, uh, Italy and uh, Spain's uh, government yield is still trading at all time high. Means the market is not buying in the idea of uh, uh, policy maker behind them as supporting them, pumping liquidity. I don't think so. Uh, market actually registered that part of uh, support. So you were you you and also I think two days ago. Or Morgan Stanley to come out with a 50% uh, the, the profit target 50% less than the previous quarter and Goldman Sachs also uh, announced a weaker than expected uh, slightly weaker as compared to last quarter as well so you will actually expect a external environment will actually trigger the domestic market especially um, people will be worried about systemic risk uh, in the banking system because no one can spare themselves out from uh, any collapse in European banks. Within Malaysia fixed income, is there one idea or sector that you feel particularly bullish or bearish on? 
Okay, bullish, I would say I will be bullish on a high grade uh, segment, especially after so called the uh, rally in the MGS market and um, and it will really filter through into uh, uh, government guarantee issuance and also uh, AAA issuance. So I'm actually very bullish on that. Um, but if you say bearish, perhaps um, I will say it, um, cautious about a very cyclical sectors, um, especially um, issuance um, which is unsecured and perhaps clean that related to maybe um, uh, I would say it, um, perhaps oil and gas and commodity because sectors actually require very high capex and borrowing costs. Um, yeah, because I think mark, the the mark, the whole world is going to trading into a two tier market. That means people are going to favor very high grade market and also may avoid um, especially European banks um, uh, issuance that will, you, because I think even European when for banks, when they need to actually raise the borrowing cost, they actually have to pay quite a hefty borrowing cost in the market. Yeah. How much of an investor's portfolio should consist of Malaysia bonds? Well, um, I would say that perhaps if I am a ringgit investor now, I may not want to invest out of uh, Malaysia because of the strength of a ringgit. Um, year to date, we are not the outperformer, um, vis a vis Korean won, Sing dollar, Aussie dollar. So I think we do have room to actually appreciate. Um, but if you are talking about invest in Asia pack, then I would think that perhaps you know uh, um, it would be a good exposure to actually invest in Asia pack bond fund because um, I think the whole region um, uh, currency outlook should be fairly good. Um, but if you are talking about investing in global bond, I would still think that in near term ring, uh, ringgit should outperform dollar.